Hello students, in this module we will learn about alternative respiratory pathway in plants with emphasis on the alternative oxidase or AOX activity. Photosynthesis and respiration are the primary pathways of carbon and energy metabolism in plants. Photosynthesis uses light energy, carbon dioxide and water to drive the synthesis of carbohydrates and release of oxygen. Respiration then uses these carbohydrates to support growth and maintenance through the provision of carbon intermediates, reducing equivalence and ATP. These processes in turn release carbon dioxide and convert oxygen back to water. Respiratory pathways are vital for plant carbon and energy metabolism, which is the main use of most assimilated carbohydrates. Most respiratory pathways are very well established, the prominent being glycolysis in the cytosol and the tricarboxylic acid or TCA cycle. TCA cycle occurs in the matrix of mitochondria coupled with the electron transport chain, which functions along the inner mitochondrial membrane. In plants, the complexity of respiratory pathways allows not only the switching from glycolysis to fermentative metabolism, but the utilization of alternative pathways in plants allows the maintenance of substrate oxidation while minimizing the production of ATP. Plants have additional ETC components that help in modulation of the ATP yield depending on the components of the path used for NADPH oxidation and oxygen reduction. Glycolysis, the oxidative pentose phosphate pathway, and the mitochondrial tricarboxylic acid cycle are the central respiratory pathways. These pathways use carbohydrate derived from photosynthesis to supply carbon intermediates for biosynthesis and also couple the carbon oxidation with the reduction of NADP to NADPH. These reducing equivalents are then used to support biosynthetic reactions or can be oxidized by the mitochondrial electron transport chain, which is localized in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Complex 1, which is NADH dehydrogenase, as well as a series of other plant-specific alternate dehydrogenases couple NADPH oxidation to reduction of the ubiquinone pool. Complex 2, which is the succinate dehydrogenase of the TCS cycle, is a further supply of electrons for the ubiquinone pool. Electrons in ubiquinol, which is the reduced form of ubiquinone or dihydroubiquinone, are then passed to complex 3, cytochrome C, and finally to complex 4, which is cytochrome oxidase. Complex 4 then catalyzes the 4 electron reduction of molecular oxygen to water. Electron transport at complexes 1, 3, and 4 is coupled with proton translocation from the mitochondrial matrix to inner membrane space and the resulting proton motive force is used by complex 5 that is ATP synthase to generate ATP from ATP and inorganic phosphate. A defining feature of the plant mitochondrial electron transport chain is the presence of two terminal oxidases. In addition to cytochrome oxidase or COX, and alternative oxidase, AOX, is present that directly couples the oxidation of ubiquinol with the reduction of molecular oxygen to water. 
AOX introduces a branch in the electron transport chain, such that electrons in ubiquinol are partitioned between the cytochrome pathway involving complex 3, cytochrome C, and complex 4, and AOX. It can be noted that AOX dramatically reduces the energy yield of respiration in terms of ATP since it is not proton pumping and since electrons flowing to AOX bypass the proton pumping complexes 3 and 4. Electron flow to AOX can still support a reduced ATP yield if these electrons arise via the proton pumping complex 1. However, if electron flow to AOX is being supported by an alternate dehydrogenase or by complex 2, which unlike complex 1 are not proton pumping, then electron flow will be completely uncoupled from ATP production. So, plants have additional electron transport chain components that allow for a dramatic modulation of ATP yield depending on the components of the path used for NADPH oxidation and oxygen reduction. So let's study the components of the non-phosphorylating bypass mechanisms that form the basis of alternative respiratory pathway, that is the alternative oxidase, AOX, external NADPH dehydrogenases in the first part of the electron transport chain, and also plant uncoupling mitochondrial proteins. Alternative oxidase, AOX. Genes encoding AOX are ubiquitous in the kingdom plantae. AOX is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane of all plants and fungi and a limited number of protists. AOX also appears to be present in several prokaryotes and even some animal systems. A small group of thermogenic plants are able to heat their reproductive tissues to temperatures higher than ambient temperature by maintaining a very high rate of uncoupled and hence heat releasing AOX respiration. This can function to attract pollinators or provide optimal temperatures for floral development. However, most plants and tissues are inherently non-thermogenic, so in such a case the presence of AOX must be for other purposes. AOX are homodimeric proteins oriented towards the inner mitochondrial matrix. AOX diverts electrons from the main respiratory chain at the ubiquinone pool and mediates the four electron reduction of oxygen to water. In comparison to electron transfer by the cytochrome chain, that is by complex 3 and 4, AOX does not pump protons. Therefore, transfer of electrons by AOX does not create a transmembrane potential and thus it is not coupled with ATP production. The decline in free energy between ubiquinol and oxygen is dissipated and mostly released as heat. The diversion of electrons to the AOX pathway can reduce ATP generation by up to 60%, thus reducing the energy yield of respiration substantially. The AOX ATP dissipatory pathway plays an important role when the electron transport chain is inhibited by various stress conditions. Electron transport chain inhibition increases NADH to NAD plus and ATP to ADP ratios and as a consequence the TCA cycle could slow down. But against this, AOX contributes to the maintenance of electron flow and the production of reducing equivalents to help maintain the TCA cycle. Indeed, AOX activation occurs in direct response to stress. Now let's look at the mitochondrial stress response and 
AOX activity. As sessile organisms, land plants are subjected to many stressors in their environment, such as high or low temperatures, drought, nutrient deficiency, salt and metal toxicity, hypoxia, and pathogen attack. Since the net carbon gain of a plant is equal to carbon dioxide uptake by photosynthesis minus carbon dioxide release by respiration, changes in either of these processes during stress will impact the overall plant growth and productivity. Plant mitochondria are a source of reactive oxygen species, ROS. This is primarily due to single electron leak from respiratory chain components to oxygen, producing superoxides. Both complexes 1 and 3 are proposed to be major sites of such electron leak. Both complexes release superoxide to the matrix, while complex 3 may also release some superoxide to the intermembrane space, as shown in animals. Once produced, matrix superoxide can be further converted to hydrogen peroxide. The generation of reactive nitrogen species, or RNS, such as nitric oxide, has also been linked to plant mitochondria. ROS and RNS are perhaps specifically generated by mitochondria to influence plant responses to stress. This may suggest that they act as signaling molecules for stress acclimation. Various studies have proven that diverse mitochondrial dysfunctions, often associated with oxidative stress, result in the induction of AOX at the transcript and protein level. As a result, AOX is now often used as a general marker of mitochondrial dysfunction and or cellular oxidative stress. Also, Numerous abiotic and biotic stress conditions are known to elevate AOX amount, supporting the idea that such stresses impact mitochondrial function and that AOX might represent an important acclimation response. Now let's study about AOX capacity and activity. The plant AOX is an interfacial membrane protein oriented towards the matrix side of the inner mitochondrial membrane and coupling the oxidation of ubiquinol to the four electron reduction of oxygen to water. As emphasized earlier, AOX is non-proton pumping and since it bypasses proton pumping complexes 3 and 4, electron flow to AOX dramatically reduces the energy yield of respiration. The maximum possible flux of electrons to AOX is often termed as AOX capacity. Estimation of AOX capacity is analogous to estimation of an enzyme's maximum activity. Alternative oxidase, or AOX, is a non-energy conserving terminal oxidase in the plant mitochondrial electron transport chain. And while respiratory carbon oxidation pathways, electron transport, and ATP turnover are tightly coupled processes, AOX provides a means to relax this coupling, thus providing a degree of metabolic homeostasis to carbon and energy metabolism. Besides their role in primary metabolism, plant mitochondria also act as signaling organelles, able to influence processes such as nuclear gene expression, AOX activity can control the level of potential mitochondrial signaling molecules such as superoxide, nitric oxide, and important redox couples. In this way, AOX also provides a degree of signaling homeostasis to the organelle. Evidence suggests that AOX function in metabolic and signaling homeostasis is particularly important during stress. These include abiotic stresses such as low temperature, drought and nutrient deficiency, as well as biotic stresses such as a bacterial infection.
Now let's look at NADPH dehydrogenases linked to AOX activity. In addition to complex 1, that is NADH dehydrogenase, there are some additional proteins which can use NADH and NADPH to reduce ubiquinone pool. These are NADPH dehydrogenases. Type 2 NADPH dehydrogenases are membrane-bound proteins that face either the matrix or the inner membrane side. Unlike complex 1, these are not involved in proton translocation and therefore do not contribute to ATP synthesis. As shown in the figure, there are at least four types of NADH dehydrogenase proteins. Two on the external side of the inner mitochondrial membrane, one oxidizing NADH and one NADPH, and two to the inner face of the inner membrane. Similarly, use NADH and the other use NADPH. Substrate specificity for these dehydrogenases is based on pH and calcium. Various environmental conditions and biotic or abiotic stresses influence the dynamics of calcium and pH. And these two factors in turn have a cascading effect on the activities of NADH and NADPH dehydrogenases. Uncoupling proteins, or UCPs. Plant uncoupling proteins are a class of mitochondrial anion carrier proteins. UCP is a specialized protein that uncouples electron transport from ATP synthesis in mitochondria by acting downstream of the complex 4. The primary function of UCPs are to transport protons from the intermembrane space into the mitochondrial matrix. This translocation leads to dissipation of proton motive force generated by the electron transport chain and thus free energy is released as heat and not used for ATP generation. Uncoupling proteins mediates a fatty acid dependent proton leakage across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Therefore, within the context of plant energy balance rearrangements, UCP may have overlapping functions with other alternative pathway proteins in the electron transport chain like AOX and NADPH dehydrogenases. Due to this, a tight regulation of UCP takes place in mitochondria. UCPs are mainly activated by free fatty acids. Also, various physiological states such as pH, redox status of the ubiquinone pool control UCP activity. UCPs are involved in the recycling of metabolic intermediates of photorespiration and play important role in maintaining the metabolite flux during the condition of photorespiration. That's all we'll be learning today. So in this module, I hope I was able to shed some light on the alternative respiratory pathway that plants employ to maintain metabolic homeostasis, especially during stress conditions. The alternative oxidase or AOX pathway is an alternative electron transport pathway in addition to the cytochrome oxidase or COX pathway in plant mitochondria. This pathway diverts electrons from the ubiquinone pool and reduces oxygen to water with neither proton translocation nor ATP synthesis. So, alternative oxidase is a non-energy conserving terminal oxidase in the plant mitochondrial electron transport chain. While respiratory carbon oxidation pathways, electron transport and ATP turnover are tightly coupled processes AOX provides a means to relax this coupling, thus providing a degree of metabolic homeostasis to carbon and energy metabolism. It has been demonstrated that the AOX pathway is critical for resistance to biotic and abiotic stress conditions. We have also learned how NADPH dehydrogenases and plant uncoupling proteins also modulate ATP yield of the respiratory chain. So, 
classical and alternative respiratory metabolism coordinate with high precision to maintain ATP generation under a range of situations that could otherwise lead to an overreduction in the electron transport chain components.